So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is really useful in that you don't have to um, you don't have to do those stupid ice tables um, that I that I dislike. And this is a a common question that people will ask is kind of one that's like, oh, you know, you walk into the lab and you you run your reaction and you forgot to uh, you forgot to calculate the initial or uh, measure the initial pH. You know, can you still f solve for the initial pH if you're given all this stuff? And it's like, you know. And real, it's it's a great question. Like pedagogically, I love it, but it'd be easier to just re like I just redo it. Like it's not that hard to to just rerun your reaction. But anyways, so you know, we we'll usually ask a question where you know you have your final pH of six point four, your pKa of your acid is like a seven point two. You have point zero six moles of your buffer, and they'll usually always give it as volume and ask you to multiply it by the concentration, even though that's like a useless extra step that I'm just gonna skip here and give it to you. So you have 0 0.06 moles of your buffer. And let's just say you have a strong acid, like I'll say HBr, I don't know. And you do the same thing. You calculate the 0 0.01 moles of that. And you wanna know how to calculate the initial pH from that. Um, so let's go ahead and just look at the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. A real easy way to remember it is just to take the negative log of both sides of your Ka uh, equation. And then you can just manipulate it and you get this. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of A over HA. So we want to know what the initial pH is given all these conditions, given the final pH here. Real quickly, just think this through. Okay, logically, what do we need to know to find the initial pH if we already have the final pH? Well, the way that I go about doing this is thinking, well, okay, I need to know what the final ratio of this is at this pH here of A to HA. And then I can use the moles of HBr to give me the change. If I have the final and the change, I can pretty easily probably find the initial. And if I have the initial and a pKa is a constant, I can probably find this initial pH. So if you already know how to do all that stuff, you don't have to keep watching this video. Uh, I'm just gonna be working through the process real quick. So in this example here, let's find out what the final ratio of A to HA is. 6.4 pKa is 7.2 plus the log of A to HA. Subtract 7.2 from both sides. So we're chemists or great mathematicians. And uh, I always gotta use a calculator. Like, especially if I'm making like a video tutorial because it's like, I want people to not just like know that I'm an idiot. I want them just to think it. And I was gonna say that these are F, like final ratio that. Okay, so do some more algebra, 10th power there. Um, if I raise that to the negative 10th, so here's something you may want to take note of. For, for homework, it doesn't matter. But for real life, oh man, you end up calculating an irrational number. <laughs> like this 10 to the 8th here is actually an irrational number. I'm just rounding it at this point. That becomes incredibly frustrating because, you know, you don't know if you're going to be missing something important later on. Anyways, so what does this mean? Well, this means that for every one mole of HA, I have 0.158 moles of AF. And one of the things that I recommend for a lot of people who are learning budding scientists is try to look at as many different uh, relationships um, as you uh, try to identify as many different relationships as possible. So let's go ahead and just right now, preemptively, look at the relationship of the ratio of AF to the total. I'm just a different way of expressing this kind of. AF to the total, well how much AF do I have? I have 0.158, and then the total is 1.158. The beauty of this is that it's dimensionless, and so it doesn't really matter what the actual number of moles is, we don't care about it, it's dimensionless. And that's why I love the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation a lot more than ice tables or other, you know, more kind of difficult things that you have to do out there because it's not dimensionless and you, you have to work with units and you have to worry about that stuff. Okay, so let's figure out HAF to the total. But yeah, just, just for reference, if you can express something as a dimensionless number, that'll help you out a lot. Okay, so HA over HA total. Well, this is obviously one over 1.158. Um, since this was an irrational number, the irrationality is probably gonna be conserved. So I'm just gonna round that off, 1.158. 
and I get 0.136 as my uh, ratio of AF to total, and then for my ratio of HAF to total, that's one divided by 1.158. This is 0.864. Again, these are just rounded values here. Okay, so these are probably some useful ways of looking at the relationship of, of or just the ratio of A to HA. And I think from that, we can deduce, again, the change. And if we know the change, we can figure out the initial value of this, which will help us figure out the initial value for the pH. So I'm just going to move this up here. This is a long video, so I hope you do that as well. All right. So what is AF over HA? What, is, what does it mean if I take a buffer and I throw in some strong acid into that buffer? Well, what that means is that all of that strong acid is going to react with a conjugate base and that conjugate base is gonna take that strong, mean, nasty acid and convert it into a nice, clean, uh, weaker acid. At least that's the concept behind it. So, initial, HA initial, that's what the little not sign means. Um, this reacted with the moles of HBr, which just for reference is 0 0.01, and the moles of our buffer is 0 0.06, 0 0.01, and HA, in order to get the final, it actually had to gain 0 0.01 from the strong acid there. Okay, cool. Let's just take this a little step further now. Um, we know that we can, at least, you know, algebraically represent from that A naught is equal to simply A final plus 0 0.01. And I could say the same thing about H A naught. This is just simply H A final minus 0 0.01, right? It's the same thing. Okay, well, let's just focus on finding out what these actual values are. So we said that we have for the buffer 0 0.06 moles. Okay, that number doesn't change. We haven't added more buffer to our solution. It's pretty much the same way as it is before. And that's kind of where it's usually helpful, like I said, to look at different ways of expressing relationships. And that'll probably hopefully help us with the figuring out the total here. So let's go ahead and calculate A naught is equal to H to AF final. Again, we said that the relationship for the final was 0.158 for the final divided by the total, 1.158. In this case, I'm going to multiply this by the number of moles, 0 0.06. And I'm going to have to do what? Add it to it, 0 0.01. I now have HA initial is, what is my ratio here? Oh, I'm actually, you know what, I'm, I'm being super ridiculous here because I've already calculated these ratios here. I'm just going to write it out like this, but you can go ahead and just round it using those ratios that I've given you. But this is 1 divided by 1.1 1. 1 over 1.58 oh, 1 multiplied by 0 0.06. We said that that was minus 0 0.01. Okay. And yeah, like I said, this is going to give you, these two numbers here are going to be irrational, so you can just round them using these numbers down here. So let's see what that equals to. So for the initial amount of A uh, conjugate base, 0 0.01, I'm just going to say 0 0.018, that's what I'm going to round it to. For the initial ratio of HA, we got 0 0.042 rounding these two numbers up here. So that is my quantity of, or at least the quantities of, of the conjugate base and then the conjugate acid. Now we've pretty much solved the equation. Now we just have to uh, plug in more. And actually just as a, as a fun fact, because we know that our buffer is six moles, we know that this has got to be HA plus A. We know that this has to be 0 0.018 plus 0 0.0. For two up to being 0 0.06, which is the number of our moles in our buffer. So we're doing this, we're doing this right so far. It's a little way you can check yourself. Okay, let's see. So we said that the initial pH is equal to the pKa, which is a constant that we're not worried about. We already know what that is, plus the log of 
A over HA. Something that you may want to know just from looking at this stuff, if you have a log base, just a property of logs, the number on the bottom is larger, this is probably going to give us a negative value. We have more of our acid than we have of our base. This is probably going to be less than the pKa. All right, so we get 6.83, give or take. And that makes sense because we're within that plus or minus one range of pKa. So addition of even a strong acid isn't going to induce a very large change in, in the pH. So our initial pH was 6.83. Final pH is 6.4. We have ourselves a pretty good buffer system here going on um, after the addition of that many moles. Um, some notes that you may want to notice is that you may get a different values. This is because of that one point we had a, an irrational number in our procedure here. This 10 to the eighth here is an irrational number. And so different calculators have different internal rounding uh, consistencies with them. Um, and so we did a lot of rounding in this plot. So you may get a different answer than 6.83, but it should be somewhere around that, uh, that approximated value.